continuing to grow here at We Got Ed, rawstory.com, and ringoffireradio.com. This is Ed Schultz News and Commentary. Now, we were talking about Labor Day and all the right things. <coughs> Excuse me. We were talking about Labor Day and all the right things. We were talking about Labor Day and all the right things being said at the rallies. And significantly, we we have to come to grips with this, that the issues are much more severe today. They are different today than they were in 12 and in 8 and in 04. And the bottom line here is, is that there has to be a fine line that has to be walked by the labor folks right now. They don't have to endorse anybody because they have to know who is on their side, whether it be the Employee Free Choice Act or whether it be the Trans-Pacific Partnership. These two things are far more sensitive today than what they were in previous election cycles. For instance, the steel industry is going through something it hasn't seen in some 30 years. Joining us now is Leo Gerard. He is the United Steelworkers International President. Mr. Gerard, good to have you with us. Good to be with you, Ed. You're right on. Well, it's it's uh, it's China, it's South Korea, it's India, and it's a landscape that middle class workers in this country are constantly fighting. Well, and so 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 this this brings us to a point. All right, which candidate is going to do the most? Doesn't it? Yeah, and I think uh, as you said. Uh, our union is not in a hurry to step out and endorse anyone yet. Uh, we got to see who's going to be in at the at the final bell. But uh, whether you're watching uh, Donald Trump and laughing at him, or whether you're watching uh, Bernie and being amazed by what he's doing, uh, they're both in many ways hitting on the same issue: the disenchantment of the middle class, the erosion of manufacturing, the rotten trade deals that keep destroying. Uh, the industrial base of the country. We just saw in the last uh, couple of weeks, China devalued their currency again. And uh, now it was followed suit by South Korea, Vietnam, Malaysia, and some of the TPP countries. And so if, if, if China's not going to get sanctioned for devaluing its currency, why wouldn't it do it again? And why wouldn't the other Asian countries follow them? So that uh, we need to have someone who's going to finally stand up. And I just want to say that... Uh, uh, for people that care about the middle class, your your voice on the Ed Show is a very powerful voice, and you and uh, and others have helped galvanize this issue, so that now, unlike 2012 and 2008, 2004, this issue is now going to be front and center in any campaign. Well, you, you know what you just said in the last minute, Mr. Gerard, is what I think the American people need to hear from someone who wants to be president of the United States. The severity of the issue sounds so much different coming from you than it does from these people who want union endorsements. Now, the the story reads that union leaders are playing hard to get with the candidates, such as Hillary Clinton, and she says she's not going to take anything for granted. Bernie Sanders is out there walking with the workers in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, on on, on Friday. Uh, Joe Biden has, on record for years, been a good labor guy. But, of course, he's out doing the work of the president on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. I mean, is there going to come a time when labor is going to have to turn to old friends and say we got new issues, this is what we need? What about that? Well, I think we're going to turn to friends, and, and uh, you know, maybe it's my sensitivity, but uh, these, aren't, these aren't new issues. They're issues that we're finally getting people to pay attention to. Yeah. Our union has been yelling about these issues now. Yeah. I'm the third I'm the third international president that's been yelling the same thing and each time it gets more intense, more intense, more intense. And and, and the reality is Ed that if we just look at China, China has five hundred million tons, five hundred million tons of domestic overcapacity in steel. That's almost four and a half times more steel than America uses in one whole year. They're gonna dump that because they don't want another tenement square. We've got overcapacity in all forms of paper. We've seen what happened with tires. We filed a case with tires. We won it. Uh, three years later, they dumped 50 million plus tires into our market in less than six months. So at some point, somebody's got to get wise and say to China, enough's enough. And, and why should it have to be the union that files the complaint? Why doesn't the, um, you know, the, the trade representative office have the budget to police the trade deals, police the trade rules? Why should it be the labor movement that has to police the trade rules? 
I wasn't, you know, when I first ran for office in the union, I never dreamt that I, my job would be fighting trade deals. I thought my job would be negotiating in collective agreements and working on health and safety issues and workers' rights. And so now that uh, we've turned ourselves into the trade police, that should be the government's job. Yeah. And that's what's so disheartening about all of this. So yeah. the, what, what has to happen? What do, you, what, do you, what do you need a candidate to do? Um, and and is this going to be a, a different political run this time? I, th- I think it's going to be a different political run, and I, we need a candidate that's actually going to mean what they say and say what they mean when it comes to manufacturing, when it comes to trade, when it comes to infrastructure. Look, I'm not prepared to dump all over the president. Yeah. When you when you figure that he, what he inherited was losing 700,000 jobs a month, and we've had God knows how many continuous months of employment growth, but at the same time as we've had that employment growth, We've had the erosion of the industrial base. We've had a president that's tried to bring forward a very, very constructive infrastructure program that would have put people back to work and it had a strong Buy America provision in it. And even with that strong Buy America provision in it, the Republicans stymied it every step of the way. First it was the Senate when they were able to filibuster, and then it was the House when they didn't, and then they've gone back and forth trying to stop progress. So the president on that side has been good. But on the side of uh, whack in China for the continuous violations, I actually said to a couple of politicals the other night that one of the things that would be useful is to say to a, to a country, uh, you're prepared to say to, to poor people, three strikes and you're out. Well, why don't we say to a, to a country, if you violated our trade rules three times, you're out, you know? So and you're, you're not allowed back in the market. If a, a con- the the economy in China is starting to falter and has been for several months, in fact, there was a story carried the other day that their manufacturing is at the lowest level it's been in some time, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that there's a lot of product on the market that they've created that they're not moving, or yeah. or, um, or do I have that wrong? How does that you, play into American workers? Well, what what you've got is that. Uh, whether it's steel, paper, tire, rubber, aluminum, all those things, they have domestic overcapacity. They can't afford, politically or economically, to stop their factories from running because if they do, they're going to have riots in the streets like they had with Tenement Square. Sure. So they're going to keep getting away with what they can get away with, and they're going to keep throwing their product into any country they can get it into, whether it's the United States, Canada, Brazil, Europe. The Europeans are starting to take uh, strong action against China. And so what that does is it not only takes away our jobs, it depresses the prices. So, for example, now you were in the pipe mill in Lorain, Ohio. That pipe mill is pretty much idled. And the reason it's idled is that 53% of the pipe coming into New America is coming from Asian countries that don't play by the rules. Mm-hmm. So not only do they steal our jobs, but they drive down the prices for the jobs that are left and our companies can't make money. And now that that plant's been idled, that's a story that needs to be told again to wake up America that this is what's happening. And and, and, that, and in that plant, Ed, you know you were there. Company U.S. Steel put almost $300 million into the modernization of that plant, only to get knocked out of the market by South Korea, who are dumping. Yeah. And when we won the case against South Korea, rather than adhere to it, they increased their exports. So when they increased their exports, what we should have done is punish them. Bang. Done. Trade wars is what it is, and it well, seems there's, there's a trade war going on, but we're not the ones fighting it. <laughs> that's right, and we're, we're not we're not doing anything to protect our, our markets whatsoever. Yeah, and so yeah. this is affecting you know Main Street, Lorain, Ohio, which is exactly what Bernie Sanders is talking about when it comes to the middle class. The okay. issues on the middle class today are far greater than the, what they were four years ago. And yeah. it all stems from lousy trade agreements. And now we're on the verge of doing the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which I spent countless hours doing on television, and I'm still sounding the alarm on this. This is the worst thing this country could do, and every union is against it. Yeah. So, it, and, 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 Ed, you're, 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 you've made the point you've made it accurately and articulately. The, the fact of the matter is that unless uh, we do something about it, I can see in the horizon the continued erosion of our industrial base. That'll be steel, aluminum, paper, glass, tire, rubber, and, and uh, with, with the rules of origin. If you got the rules of origin that we have in South Korea, people don't realize that 
for for an instrument or a car or whatever to be considered a South Korean uh, article, all it needs is 35% domestic content. Yeah. So even the South Koreans can get their stuff from Vietnam, from Malaysia, from Brunei. They can get it from wherever the hell they want, and it's still consistent with the rules. Yeah. No, Leo crazy. Gerard, uh, one of, you, you just uh, keep up the fight, my friend. Let's let's end this on a positive note. Are the Steelers going to be any good? The Steelers are always good, even when they're <laughs> bad. They're good. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I got to be careful, but our guys were uh, staying at the William Penn and the Steelers that were in the practice squad and the, in training camp. Yeah, some of them were staying in the hotel. And when Michael Vick went walking by, a couple of our guys started barking like a dog. I had to give them shit. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. It's all in good fun. Leo Gerard, United Steelworkers International President. Great to have you with us, Leo. Thanks so much.